So we'll start by settling the body, adopting a stable, comfortable, upright position serviceable for meditation. So we think about keeping our feet flat and our back straight, torso open, hands in the lap right over left with the palms upturned and the thumbs gently touching. Our eyes are gently closed or slightly open, making sure we let in enough light to remain alert. We try to maintain an awareness of not slouching, not leaning, but we also let go of any unnecessary tension or rigidity in the body, relaxing into a stable, comfortable, upright position. And we begin to let go of attending to the environment, allowing sights and sounds to be as they are without investigation. Constraining our awareness just to the body and mind. Noticing quickly when anything other than that one physical sensation, or I'm sorry, um, concentrating that awareness on the breath, the in breath and the out breath, the sensation arising in the area around the nostrils. Noticing quickly when anything other than that one physical sensation is arising in the mind and without judgment or frustration, lifting our awareness up from those distractions and placing it gently but firmly again and again on the breath.
and then generate a broad and altruistic motivation for your time. Thinking of using this time to establish and deepen beneficial, constructive ways of thinking and acting, cultivating states of mind that when they arise naturally and spontaneously would give rise to actions that are beneficial for others. Thinking of reducing and ultimately eliminating the influence of states of mind that are not beneficial or constructive. States of mind that agitate and disturb one's own peace. States of mind that very often give rise to actions that cause harm to others. Thinking that this process of genuine inner transformation is the way in which we can be of greater and greater benefit to sentient beings over time. And then with that motivation, we will contemplate drawing ourselves close to the aspect of enlightened mind that relates to the overcoming of obstacles, the, cor the courage to leap into action for the benefit of sentient beings, the aspect of enlightened mind that is embodied by Bhattatara. So we begin by thinking of ourselves in a large open space. And in front is Buddha Tara, emerald green in color, seated upon a lotus and moon. She is the essence of all of the Buddha's omniscience, love, compassion, and is manifesting in the nature of light. Her left leg is drawn up, signifying her control over the energy of desire. And her right leg is extended, indicating her willingness to arise for the benefit of sentient beings. Her left hand is at her heart in the refuge gesture, palm out, thumb and ring finger joined, and the remaining three fingers raised. Her right hand is on her right knee in the gesture of granting sublime realizations, palm down, facing outward, with the fingers loosely pointing down. In each hand, she holds the stem of a blue Utpala flower. She's adorned with silks and jeweled ornaments. And her, her smiling face radiates love and compassion. So we'll take a moment to stabilize that visualization.
and they visualize being surrounded in all directions by all sentient beings, visualized in human form. Our friends and loved ones are immediately behind. Those that we have conflict with are in front. And strangers are encircling us in all directions. And if you would like, you can join in the refuge and bodhicitta prayer. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. And then the four immeasurable thoughts. And we'll pause briefly after each one and try to generate a heartfelt connection with that aspiration. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from attachment and anger that hold some close and others distant. And then the seven limb prayer. Reverently, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I declare all my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in the merit of all holy and ordinary beings. Please remain until the end of cyclic existence and turn the wheel of Dharma for living beings. I dedicate my own merits and those of all others to the great enlightenment. And the mandala offering. This ground anointed with perfume, strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a butter field and offer it. May all living beings enjoy this pure land. Yadam guru ratna mandala kam
then bringing to mind so that the Vatara represents the aspect of enlightened mind that overcomes obstacles, leads to success. Think of any requests that you might have on behalf of yourself or others in worldly or spiritual endeavors. And holding these requests in mind, we'll recite a short prayer to Bodhatara. Om, my prostrate to the goddess foe destroyer, liberating Lady Tara. Homage to Tari, savioress, heroine, with Tutare, dispelling all fears, granting all benefits with Ture. To her with sound soha I bow. O oh, my prostrate to the goddess foe destroyer, liberating Lady Tara. Homage to Tare, savioress, heroine, with Tutare, dispelling all fears, granting all benefits with Ture. To her with sound soha I bow. O oh, my prostrate to the goddess foe destroyer, liberating Lady Tara. Homage to Tare, savioress, heroine, with Tutare, dispelling all fears, granting all benefits with Ture. To her with sound soha, I bow. And then holding in mind those aspirations, that meaning of that prayer, they're visualized from the image of Buddha Tara, that rays of light with nectar running down them like raindrops running down a wire emanate from the point where Tara's left thumb and ring finger touch. The rays and nectar flow continuously reaching you and all beings surrounding you, purifying your hindrances to Dharma practice and obscurations to liberation and enlightenment. Holding in mind the difficulties of those that you are engaging in the practice for, that you are connected to. And the suffering of all kind mother sentient beings, those afflicted by war, starvation, civil unrest, oppression, and those whose minds are obscured heavily by hatred, attachment, jealousy, covetousness, As the rays and nectar enter their bodies, their sufferings and the causes of their sufferings are completely extinguished.
now visualizing that the light rays are composed of countless tiny replicas of Bodhatara, each replica absorbing into the heart of each sentient being and oneself and all other sentient beings become inseparably one with Bodhatara's holy body, holy speech, and holy mind. And then when you're ready, we'll come back together. And we'll dedicate. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of Bodhatara and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel, Bodhicitta, that has not arisen, arise and grow. May that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the snowy mountain paradise, you, the source of good and happiness, all-powerful Tenrezig Tenzin Gyatso, please remain until samsara's end. <laughs>